What's up? Praise the Lord. Hey, it's Monday again. I know. I know. I know it's Monday, but we're going to kick this Monday off um, on a good foot. We're going to kick it off with excitement. We're going to kick it off uh, with the word of God. So let's dive back into it. We're in the series of Victory in the Wilderness. We're coming from Matthew 4, where it's talking about the story of Jesus uh Going into the wilderness, the Bible says he was led by the spirit to be tempted by the devil. And um, there's three temptations that Jesus came up against. But this whole time it was to prove it was to test him. It was to consecrate him. And it was to train him uh, for ministry and to eventually train him for his ultimate assignment. But most of all, I think it was to be an example for us on how we can overcome as well. So, again, we're in the series victory in the wilderness and we're talking about how to overcome oppositions there's one thing uh it's one thing to overcome things that are in front of you that maybe you know kind of keep you stagnated but what do you do when uh things are working against you when powers and situations and problems are working against you there are forces working against you so that's what we're going to be talking about, how to overcome those oppositions. Again, this is a series. This is week two, um, or the official week one. We did the intro last week. This is the official week one. Um, and we're going to the scripture. So let's go to Matthew 4. Um, and today, like I said, we're just going to break it down. So let's just go to verse one. That's all I want to do today. <laughs> like I said, this thing got this packed with so much. We're just going to break it down. So let's just pay attention to verse one today. Um, Matthew 4 and 1, it says, Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Pray a day. That, that's a lot right there. Because he was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Like why the spirit couldn't lead him to the lake to go fishing or something simple? The spirit of God will sometimes lead you to do things that challenge you. The spirit sometimes will lead you into situations that are uncomfortable. Nothing about the wilderness where it's hot, there's no water, there's no people. You have wild animals, you have no food. Why would the spirit lead you into a place that's uncomfortable? That's only a question that you can answer. Have, have, have the spirit ever led you to do something that was outside of your comfort zone? Have the spirit of God ever led you to do something that stretched you? How did that feel? Not only do you have the feeling of being uncomfortable, but it says he was tempted by the devil. <laughs> So not only do we have the spirit of God that's pushing us into uncomfortable situations, but we now have the enemy too that is tempting our flesh, that is tempting our mind, that is tempting our beliefs. This is why I say there's just, there can be so much pressure. There can be so much opposition against us sometimes. He was led by the spirit of God into an uncomfortable comfortable place to be tempted by the devil. I'm just trying to paint the picture for you. But the topic for this week is being led by the Spirit. Jesus was led by the Spirit. How many of you know that we need the Holy Spirit? I, um, I need to carve out some time because I feel led to just do a study on that Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an apostolic guy, so I love the teachings of Paul and I love the teachings of of sanctification and glorification and justification. I love, I love all of those things. I love, I love resurrection, but I, I'm feeling led to go back and just study the Holy Spirit. Will you have some time? Let's do it together. Let's go back and just study some of the scriptures about Holy Spirit. But I just want to talk about that for a minute. Jesus was led by the Spirit. It is so important um, that we are led by the Spirit of God. If we are going to make it in these times, if we're going to thrive in our faith, if we're going to thrive as Christians and sons and daughters of the Most High God, we need the Spirit of God. Tell yourself that I need the Spirit of God. Why do I need His Spirit? Because I'm too dumb to figure this thing out on my own. 
<laughs> I'm too dumb. I'm too rebellious. Uh, nothing about me wants God. Nothing about this flesh wants him. It takes the spirit of God to want God. We have to be led by the spirit. That's why we need the fruit of the spirit. We have to be led by the spirit. Even Jesus had to be led by the spirit. John 16 and 13 says, uh, the spirit of truth, which is talking about the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you the things to come. How many of you know, the scripture is saying that the spirit of God will lead you into all truth. And the Bible says that the truth shall set you free. One point, um, before I make that point, one thing that I just want us to start doing is every day when we wake up, just say, Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, lead my day. Show me what decisions to make. Show me which route to take the word. <laughs> Holy Spirit, help my attitude. Holy Spirit, just feel me and lead me. Lead me in the way that I should go. Do not let me be left to my own devices, but Holy Spirit, lead me. Why do I need him to lead me? Because he knows what's up the road. He knows what's best for you. He knows the trials and temptation that you are going through. and He knows that it's going to build you. Just like Jesus was in the wilderness. Of course, there was no more scriptures talking about the Holy Spirit in that text. But I can imagine if the Spirit led him to the wilderness, the Spirit was there to strengthen him because his flesh was weak. Mind you, Jesus was still human. It took supernatural power to fast for 40 days in the wilderness. It took supernatural power to come against the lies of the enemy, which we'll study further. But it took the Spirit of God to not only lead him there, but to keep and to preserve him there. And that's my encouragement to you, that any place that the Holy Spirit leads you, any place that the Holy Spirit tells you to go or the decisions to make, he'll preserve you in that place. He's not a God. He's not like me where he will just leave you high and dry, but he'll lead you and he'll guide you. The Holy Spirit, like I say, he'll lead you into strange places. And sometimes these places are, are like wilderness places that are there to test you. They're there to build you. They're there to, they are there to consecrate you and to test you just as Jesus was in the wilderness. And um, like I said, I'm encouraging you to be led by the spirit. But I know some of us, we kind of get thrown off by that because, you know, if you're like me, I used to believe, you know, how do I know that the Holy Spirit is talking to me? How do I know that this is the Spirit of God and this is not just my crazy mind? Well, the Spirit of God will always sound like the Word of God. And I want to drive this point home. The Spirit of God, as we, <laughs> as we just read in John 16 and 13, write this down if you're taking notes. The Spirit of God and the Word of God is inseparable. You will never have the spirit of God and never have the word of God. You'll never have the word of God and not have the spirit of God. And when I read this, there's so many scriptures that affirm this. I was like, wow. The Holy Spirit sounds like the word of God. The more you know the word, the more you will be sensitive to the spirit. They both confirm and affirm each other. The spirit will guide you into all truth. And here's just a few examples. The Bible says that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible also says in Ephesians 6, as we're getting ready for battle and spiritual battle, it says, take the sword of the spirit, spirit which is what? The word of God. We have two examples. Wow, no, we have three. I just set up another one. The Bible says that when Jesus came, I believe this is in John, where it says that he was full of grace and full of truth. 
we have three examples showing us that the Spirit of God and the Word of God will always come together as a combo package. <laughs> so if you ever feel like you're one of them Christians to feel like, oh, I'm not deep enough to hear the Spirit. If you read that Bible, if you get into that scripture, if you get into the Word, then baby, guess what? You are in the Spirit. You have access and you're tuning your ear to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will sound just like the Word of God. The Spirit of God Spirit of God will not tell you to do anything that's not in his word. Ah! You will never hear the spirit of God tell you to do something that's not in the word. The principle of it is not in the word. Okay. The spirit led Jesus to go into the wilderness for 40 days, but the spirit of God may tell you to go on a social media fast for 40 days. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that principle of fast and that principle of consecration is in the word. You know, the Spirit of God may be telling you to forgive somebody. That's the Word of God. You know, you may hear that. Well, I don't know if they deserve my forgiveness. They did. Yada, 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 me. Mm. The Bible says, forgive those who sin against you. The Bible says, uh, forgive your debtors as God has forgiven your debt. You see what I'm saying? The Spirit of God will always sound like the Word of God. And that's so important for this text. Because, wow, fourth example, the Bible, <laughs> I love God's word. Matthew 4 starts out with Jesus being led by the spirit into the wilderness. But watch this. Once he got in the wilderness and every time he was tempted, he would always say, and it is written. Even Jesus himself knew the word of God. He knew the law. He had the spirit of God and he had the word of God in the wilderness. And that's how he overcame. So that's my encouragement to you to be led by the spirit of God. How am I going to be led by the spirit of God? I know y'all tired of hearing me saying this, but get into your word. That The more you get into that word, the more you soak it up, the way you suck up TikTok videos, the more you suck up the word of God, just like you suck up them TV shows. The more you suck up the word of God, like you suck up the text messages on your phone. Come on, somebody. We got to make this thing a priority. We got time for everything else. Get into your word. So when the spirit of God leads you to do something, you'll be able to hear. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I hope that bless you. Again, my application and my challenge for you is to every day wake up and say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, lead me. And you're going in your coming. Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, fill me. In your marriages, in your relationships, in your financial decisions, in your career choices, in your business choices, about your money, about your coin, about your health. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, lead me. And he'll lead you into the truth. And whatever he leads you to do, will always be able to be affirmed by the word of God. Remember that the spirit of God and the word of God, they're inseparable. They're going to always be together. All right, guys, go and study that scripture, Matthew 4 and 1. And I hope you guys have an, uh, an amazing Monday. God bless.